try that again. Hello stampers and crafters. My name is Tammy White from stampwithtammy.com and welcome to our Friday online class. I'm really excited to be here. I'm playing with one of my favorite new products in the new Stampin' Up! Occasions catalog, which is the uh, Miss and Magic Suite, and it is awesome. Just awesome. I love it. Love it. Love it. So um, before we get started and while you guys are jumping on board, I thought I would go over a little bit about what's happening in the stamping world. Um, and a little bit about what's happening here, because you may hear a little bit of wind blowing outside. I am in New England. We had uh, Snowmageddon yesterday, although it was a pretty bad storm, but it, it wasn't the end of the world. It was pretty much just a, a big blizzard, <laughs> just like every other blizzard we get in January. Um, but we did get a, a lot of snow, and we did get some freezing, freezing cold temperatures, and the wind is still just blowing like crazy outside, so you probably hear that. Um, and right before Snowmageddon, um, I, I love to share a little bit of my other passion on top of stamping and paper crafting, and that is aerial photography. Um, this was actually taken from my home right before the storm, uh, right before the wind started blowing, and um, it is the full moon rise um, early, early in the, actually it's the setting of the full moon early in the morning, so just uh, I'd like to share a little bit of that beauty with you guys before we get started with the stamping fun. So, um, Stamping World, what's happening? Oh my gosh. The Occasions Catalog launched on Wednesday, and the Celebration Catalog launched on Wednesday. If you didn't get a chance to check out the Stamp and Scoop show with myself and Linda, you definitely want to see that with the top 10 must-haves. We're playing with one of them today, um, and all of the Celebration sets. So, I wanted to tell you a little bit about, um, about what that means. So, first off, if you want everything, and um, you want to get it on a budget, <laughs> you have a budget, like most of us do, uh, I have a great program, and that's my VIP online stamp club. It has special access to an online um, site filled with uh, 10 years, just about 10 years of galleries of stamping techniques, crafting techniques, ideas. I add three exclusive projects every month, videos, written tutorials, uh, photo tutorials. Um, everything is included in that, and... Um, it's all for free for my VIP club members. And you also get free stamps as part of your membership. You get free catalogs or automatic as part of the, the membership. And right now I'm offering a free grab bag if you join this month. So it's a great way to get started. It's the next best deal to joining as a demonstrator, which uh, is an awesome deal right now, which is part of Celebration. And um, Celebration right now is three ways that you can save. The first is um, during the sale, is that you can purchase a $50 order in my online store and you're going to get a free celebration product and you can get information and details on this on my blog simply by clicking on the link in my um, description you can shop there as well the second way um, is if you join Stampin' Up! Now, the stamp, joining Stampin' Up! is always the best deal <clears throat> on top of everything else because you get a discount. You don't have to do any sales. You don't have to do any workshops unless you really want to, unless you want to, to be a business builder. You don't have to, though. Mo the number one reason people join is to get a discount. During celebration, you get the demonstrator kit, which is basically $126 worth of anything you want in the catalog, and then you only pay $99, so you get $26 free. And then you get free shipping, and during celebration, you get two, not one, but two free stamp sets in your demonstrator kit. So uh, on top of that deal. So, I mean, that's just an amazing, amazing deal. Anything you want in the catalogs, any amount, no, no limits. So if you have a big wish list, that's the way to go, because then you get a discount on everything after that. No obligations, no, nothing else on top of that, but you get to join our Stamp It group if you join with me, and you have a whole lot of fun and ideas coming at you, and you also have access to my VIP um, club site as a demonstrator in my group. So bonuses on top of bonuses. All right, and um, the last way, at uh, the third way to um, celebrate is with Stampin' Rewards, and that is if you are a club member, a workshop member, or if you just place a large order over $250, you get a bonus $25 free. So you get $25 free anyways, then you get a bonus $25 free on top of your celebration sets. And you also get that as a demonstrator with a discount. So you can do it as a customer full price or you can join as a demonstrator and do that and get 20% off of that. So $250, 20% off. Do the math. That's a pretty darn good deal. It's like getting bonus, you know, bonus free every time you place an order. Okay, so that's what's happening in Stamping World. Now, let's learn some stamping techniques. I'm going to be playing with Stampin' Blends today. We're going to be playing with the uh, Miss and Magic Bundle from the suite. I absolutely love the suite. Um, and it is so much fun to play with. 
Uh, while you guys are popping on, actually, um, one more thing. I, I usually do this right away, and I totally, totally glossed right over it. Um, before we get started with the stamping, I have some giveaways, as always. Um, we have three sets here. Two I'm going to be giving away live, and one I'll be giving away for the afterlife. So um, these two, the heartfelt, these are all celebration sets. So they're all things that you can earn free um, during celebration, but they're all stuff that you can get free from me right now. And um, you'll be able to get... If you leave a comment here while we're live, um, you'll be entered to win the drawing that I'm going to do w during the live broadcast for the Party Pandas or the Heartfelt Blooms stamp set. I'm just move those down a little bit so you guys can see. Um, and if you weren't lucky enough to win one of the live drawings or you weren't fortunate enough to watch while we were live here on Facebook, you're watching the After Live either on Facebook or on um, the YouTube replay, you can still leave a comment the exact same way and you will be entered to win the Epic Celebration set. I'll be doing the drawing for that on January 19th. Um, the bonus with the After Live is that if you share this broadcast on Facebook um, and type into the comments, um, shared, S-H-A-R-E-D with a D, you will be entered a second time into my After Live drawing. So you get two chances to win that if you share because I love it when you share the love right back at you. So, um, those are the live prizes for this episode. Good luck to all of you. And now, without further delay, let's get into stamping. So, um, I'm just going to move these aside. We are going to be stamping with the Miss and Magic bundles. And I wanted to um, just show you this bundle before we get started with it because I love it. It's definitely one of my favorites, right up there with the roller coaster set because you guys know how much I love roller coasters, right? So, um... This is the set. This is the Occasions catalog. It launched on Wednesday. You can now purchase this in my online store. And you'll find this suite on pages uh, 36 and 37. And um, just some, they're just adorable. I, you know, when my kids were little, they would have been all over this. They're still, they're still into it. So like the Dungeons and Dragons and stuff. So they're teenagers now, teenage boys, but they're still, this is still a great set for them. I can still do a lot with it. Um, I brought products out because I just wanted to show you up close. And I'm having a hard time with my iPad getting your comments. So I'm just going to bring my phone down so I can see. Oh, maybe that fixed it. Let's see. And, yep, yeah, that did it. Woo, we're back on. Okay, I can see you guys again. <laughs> Beautiful thing about being live and doing these classes live is that it, you can ask questions. So if you have questions on anything, feel free. If I miss it while we're live, I do go back and check them. So hopefully I, I will be able to to get you. Okay, so um, we've got the Magical Day stamp set. And um, this is just a, such a great set here. So cute. I love it. And then... Um, the matching framelits. Now the matching framelits are made to go with the stamp set. My magnets are not holding it in here. We <clears throat> put these in those, these little cases after so that they're easy to easy to take on and off, but my magnets weren't sticking to the case, so they're still sliding all over the place. <laughs> Anyways, they're made to match the stamp set, um, and they are adorable. We're going to be using both of these today. Um, now the paper and I guess I'll show you the washi tape while I have it in my hand right here. This washi tape, it's its all glittery. It's all fabulous. So awesome. Um, the, the paper that goes with the 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 suite. Now, the, the framelits were not actually made to match this because there's a bunch of different designs in here. So there's more than just a, your regular um, designs. So I'm going to show you these guys up close. I am actually doing a series on this suite on my stampatami.com blog this week. Yesterday I started um, tomorrow and sat this weekend, tomorrow and Sunday. I'm going to be posting um, awesome party uh, birthday card sets, in, which would make great invitations using this designer paper. Um, so these, because each design is a little bit different, the, the framelits, obviously, you would need 100 framelits to match them. So that is why they don't match, but it's all right. You can actually cut these little characters out and make awesome cards. Again, check my blog. Lots of great ideas coming, but I have to wiggle it a little bit. Can you see that? Wiggle it just a little bit. You can see the, the shine in there. They're sparkly, and they're, they're just it's specialty paper, and it is awesome. It's double-sided. And there's all kinds of fun. There's mermaids, there's dragons, there's unicorns. See those little unicorns? So fun. So fun. So that's the designer paper that comes in the kit. We're not actually using the designer paper on this particular card. We're going to be using this glimmer paper, though. 
I don't know if um, you guys were around last celebration. That, that happens every year. Um, but this glimmer paper um, was super, super popular. This was um, one of the things everybody, it was something that they were giving away during celebration. Everybody wanted it and it sold out and everybody was just devastated that who didn't get it. And now, because it was so popular and everybody asked for it, they're bringing it back, and you can actually purchase it now. It is, um, it, 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 it's, it's with this bundle. The colors match the bundle. We've got Bermuda Bay. This is Old Olive. And then we've got some Dazzling Diamonds um, glimmer paper in here. And the beautiful thing about the Dazzling Diamonds is that um, you can actually color this any color you want. So you can have glimmer paper in any color. So it's actually, it's, it's such a great deal. It, again, everybody everybody was so in love with that paper. Everybody wanted it that it's definitely um, great. I'm so glad that they, they listened to us and they brought it back. All right, so that's the bundle. That is the, the um, Miss and Magical bundle. Again, check out my blog for more ideas. This is the card that we are going to be making from the bundle today. I loved this set so much. It was one of the first sets that I, I couldn't wait to play with. And um, I'm going to do some coloring with the Stampin' Blends. I'm going to show you how I colored these guys in. And I'm going to show you how I made this. I, I'm calling it a castle wall, the background here with the brick folder. Um, but you can see there's actually mortar. And let me see if I can zoom in there so you can see that. It's actually textured. And the texture in between the bricks is just awesome. It's so cool. And super easy to do. You guys are going to love it. It's a technique you're going to be able to use on other folders that you're really going to love. Using that glimmer paper in there for a little bit of fun. And a couple of the dice. Okay. Diane says that glimmer paper is the best. I totally agree. Okay. So um, if you are new to my videos, or if you're not and you just uh, forgot or weren't aware of this, I have a PDF for every class that I do. Every online class has a PDF that you can follow along with. These are great to save and have if you were going to recreate this project or you, you like some of the ideas and you don't have the set yet or you're going to do it later. You can print off these PDFs and follow along. It has all of the measurements on it. It's got a picture of the sample and it's got the entire supply list on it that I'm using today. A couple of other benefits here is there's a place for you to take some notes if you need to for for you to fall back on when you're making your own and there's also a smart code here so that you can use your smartphone and zap this code and it will bring up this the resource page to this project with this video that we're making right now so that you can go back and watch the video again if you need to um, if you don't have a smartphone or don't know how to use the smart code you can um, just type this into your url and that will bring you right to this project's page again you if you if if you don't have this available or you want to get it, you forgot to download it, um, you can go to my blog and just type in Myths and Magic and, and this will pop up along with all the other ideas in, this, in the search box. Um, you can get to this PDF simply by clicking on the link in this video's description. Alrighty, let's get started. Who's ready for some stamping? I am. Pick me, pick me. Ooh, 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 pick me. All right, so um, we're going to start with our stamping. I'm going to stamp our little guys on here uh, with some basic black ink. Now, I'm using the Archival Basic Black Ink. Um, it probably would have been a better idea for me to use Memento Ink, but I brought the wrong pad down, and I put the wrong pad in the instructions. So we are using Archival Ink today, and we're going to see how that goes. They do recommend Memento Black for this, um, but... Well, let's see what happens. All right. I'm going to stamp the dragon. We're going to stamp our knight. And <laughs> I see a lot of hands raised out there ready to start stamping. I am going to stamp my words over on the side here. We're going to cut those out at the same time. So may as well just have them ready to roll. All right. The words, by the way, um, I, I pulled these from the, the brand new Petal Palette stamp set that's also in that occasions catalog. Because I liked the saying with my two little dudes on there, life is so much better with you in it. Um, because I put the two little, the, the dragon and the knight on there together and they're kind of buddies. I just thought that saying was adorable with the, with the two of them together. And there were some really great sayings that come in that, that kit, but I, I liked that. So now, once we've done our stamping, I am going to take the Stampin' Blends. Um, these are, and I have them all mixed together. I have uh, Rich Razzleberry 
and pink pirouette i have both as a with the, the stamp of blends these are alcohol markers and they come in a set of two a dark and a light with every color these are great markers um and i've got some other tutorials on my my both my facebook page videos and on my stampwithtammy.com blog using these um, we're going to do a little bit of shading with them. I had a lot of fun with this one. When we work with these, you want to have, um, you would normally use grid paper, but again, didn't have it handy. So we're just using a little piece of scrap paper underneath there. These are made to, to blend together. They're made to be really saturated with some deep color and they will bleed through. So you want to have your surface protected underneath. So I'm using the light in the dark for Rich Razzleberry, Pink Pirouette, Bermuda Bay, Soft Sky, and I'm sorry, Pool Party and the smoky slate and i'll also be using the ivory marker for our night's face again all of these are listed in the supply list so you can go back there and get them if you need it later oh well, thanks annette Annette says she loves the videos so i'm just doing a little close up here um so that you can see kind of clearly what i'm doing here i'm actually going to move these guys out of the way i'm going to start with the darker and i'm going to i'm going to work with my dragon first and then I'll work with the night. I find that um, when you're blending, you want the color to be wet. I've got regular Whisper White cardstock here, but um, it's best to work in smaller segments. So I'm taking the brush tip end. There's two tips. There's a, a little nib here and a brush tip end. I will be using the nib in a minute, but for the dragon, I'm using the brush tip end. And I'm going to start with my darker color because I do prefer to go from dark to light. And then I'll go over it if I want it to be a little darker. So I'm drawing a little bit of dark rich razzleberry on his belly and then I'm going to go with a lighter rich razzleberry and I'm going to blend around. And the reason why I didn't pull the dark all the way down to the edge there is because I find that um, because they're so saturated the color is meant to be so rich it does it does kind of bleed a little bit it feathers a little bit so if the dark is really close to the edge I find that it will bleed over the edge a little bit so I, I don't want it to actually touch the edge I want it to actually kind of get there on its own all right so now we've got a very dark belly on him and we're going to work lighter so I'm going to move up to my pink pirouette markers to go a little bit lighter again still using the brush tip end and going up and right here is probably where um, my memento ink would have been a better choice than the archival black that I brought but this is still working pretty well I do see a little bit of the, the ink pad is bleeding a little bit, but it's still working for me, so <laughs> not bad, not bad. It's always something when you're live, you never know, right? Okay, so what I've done is I've just, you know, taken a couple of the lighter ones so you can see his shaded belly there. It just pops right off the page at you, and it looks awesome. I love these blends. They're very, very fun to play with, and, and they're very relaxing. So next I'm going to take a little bit of the dark rich razzleberry on his wing, and then again, um, the lighter one, just to pull all of that. No, I'm just being really careful here because maybe the nib would be a better choice on his wing because there's a little bit of tight space there. Okay, and then we've got his wing going. So I'm just going to put those aside for a second. And we are going to move on to his body, which I'm going to do the rest of his body. Whoops, almost pulled that out of screen on you. <laughs> the rest of his body I'm going to do in the Bermuda Bay. Okay, so um, I'm going to start with the darker because I do prefer to do the darkest first. And I'm going to work on his, the very tip of his tail. And then just kind of come out a little bit. I'm going to shade a little bit of what I want to be a little bit darker on him. Just a, a little bit of his back there and a little bit of his leg. Again, I just find it easier to work in smaller segments. I'm going to do his head too, but I'm going to do that after. So I'm taking the lighter Bermuda Bay and pulling some of that dark Bermuda Bay and just blending. And, I'm, and you can also use a color lifter to blend, but right now I'm just actually blending with the lighter markers, which give a nice, nice color here. Okay, so I'm going to add another layer of the dark just to a couple areas to accent them just to make it really dark there and just blend it a little bit and then I'm going to move on to the the pool party um, blends to do the rest of his body here 
and just pull that down. So I've got the darker of the pool parties that I'm starting with first and blending the rest of his body in with that. And you see how right here there's a little bit of a line there. Then I can, I'm just going to go back with the Bermuda Bay to kind of blend that line in a little bit. And lastly, I'm going to take the light Bermuda Bay and do the very bottom of his body. So he's going from darker to lighter. It's like his light source is underneath him, except on his belly, it's the opposite. <laughs> oh, I know, probably realistically, that's probably not, not whatever the word for it is, but I liked it. And you get to have a little bit of artistic expression here when you are working with these, with what you like. He's my dragon and I'm coloring him the way I want him. <laughs> oh, I love this little dragon. So now I'm just taking the very darkest um, Bermuda Bay and I am coloring the little um, scales on his spine. And a little bit on his head here. And then we're going to blend in his head after. So we're going to go a little dark down here and then I'll take that lighter Bermuda Bay and bring a little bit of that color up and a little bit down here. And you can layer these to get darker looks, to get richer looks if you want, however you like it to come. It really is kind of a, a personal, how, you, how, how light or dark you like these to go. So I'm taking now the... the the soft sky that was soft sky darker and then a little bit lighter for the very nozzle 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 would be in a hose right and that's our dragon not bad with that archival black ink really kind of worked out pretty well isn't he adorable oh, I just love him all right so now it's time to color our night we're going to be using the same colors but I'm also going to be adding in the dark and light smoky slate um, for his armor and this is the beige for his face. So I'm just going to color his face in. And then if you wanted it to be a darker skin tone, you can use the bronze. There's a bronze color there too, if you wanted to have a tan or have a darker color. So now I'm going to do, I'm going to start with the rich razzleberry on our night. Oh, thanks for the hearts. You guys rock. I love you guys. Okay. So I'm just switching tips here and I'm going for the nib tip, which I find works a little bit better in these tight spots. So I'm going to maybe do the outline of his shield a little bit, add a little really dark, rich razzleberry there, and switching to the nib tip on the lighter, rich razzleberry, and then going around that. So we got a little, we're working from darker to lighter. And then pulling the color on his shield. I had made these cards for um, one of the swaps that I joined, the card swaps. As demonstrators, we join a lot of um, card swaps if we want ideas for upcoming classes and stuff. And, and I love to get different ideas and be able to share different ideas with you guys and for myself. Sometimes just for my own personal. Now, I've got the, the darker pink pirouette here just to touch in there just to make that really pop. Really dramatic color there. And um, so I, I did this for one of my one of my swaps that I, I entered. And so I was coloring 40, <laughs> 40 of these. And I was like, uh, you know, I was having a lot of fun. But then when I got to be about 30 of them, I was like, hmm, that's a lot of coloring. <laughs> it is very therapeutic, though. I will say that there's something about coloring that just really I love. I really enjoy. Now, I am going to go over a little bit of this just to really make it pop. And if you are just joining us, welcome. I'm glad to have you guys on board. If you leave a comment, you'll be entered to win my um, drawings. And um, we are using the Stampin' Up! Stampin' Blends alcohol markers today. And blending, as our, this will be our first technique. And then we'll be moving on to doing the background technique of our card next, which I'm really excited to share with you guys. Okay, so... I'm switching again to the nib tip on the, um, that's what I say, nib tip, by the way, 
on the Bermuda Bay and starting with a darker color, darker Bermuda Bay, work into the lighter because I just prefer to do it that way. And you see how this really adds the, the gradient to it that makes it just pop. It's a beautiful thing about these blends. And I am using the lighter color to kind of blend it all together, which is why I do like doing it from, from dark to light. So there is his shield. See how that just pops out at you? <coughs> Excuse me. And then I'm going to do his glove. Starting with a little bit of darker and working our way up. And then we're going to work on his armor. Okay, so next up we are going to do his armor, which is going to be with a smoky slate. So we're all done with the the, uh, the other colors here. I'm just going to move them out off the surface here so you guys can see what's happening. Now with his armor, I'm going to take the, the darkest, starting with the darker smoky slate. There's two of each color, a dark and a light. So I'm going to do the dark here and do just um, probably his... His armor chest plate, I think, and the rest of it I'm going to do in the light. And when I did his armor, I kind of just went around kind of like this. And I'm going to use the light to blend the rest of that color in. So we're using the lighter tip here. We'll go ahead and blend. Blend that in. Get his sword shiny, shiny smoky slate. And his feet. And then if you wanted to, you can make them just a little bit a little bit darker around the edges. For a real dramatic look there. Sherry's asking if I've been out of the house yet. No. <laughs> no, I have not. It's too cold out. I will be out this afternoon though. My son has not had school for the last two days because of the one storm yesterday and then the cold today. So we'll be going out this afternoon. It's kind of been fun. I've been working and he's been behind me on his playing his games. He's 16, so he's he's pretty self-sufficient. All right, so I am taking the big shot now. So we're gonna we're gonna back out. I had you really zoomed in so you could see the coloring up close, but I'm gonna back you out now so you can. Get a look. I am. I was torn between whether to use the magnetic platform or the precision base plate, but I opted to go with the magnetic platform. And I'm going to cut all three of these pieces together. So um, I'll be using the. Um, oh, where did I put it? There we go. We're using the magical mates to to punch out our knight and our dragon. And the magnetic platform here is just going to keep them from wiggling around is always handy. Oops, had an extra piece there. Okay, so just gonna line that up around our little dragon that's made to fit perfectly on that image. So adorbs! And then we're gonna take stitch shapes to do the circle of the life is better and I think it's the largest one. Oh, look at my stitch shapes are a mess. Any of you do this when you open them up? I think I have them all organized and every time I open them up they just yeah, uh, I got I got to I got to follow Linda and do a little bit better job of uh, organizing my stuff. She really does a great job organizing. Okay, so you notice that I line the words up towards the top of that, and this is the largest oval circle in that stitch shapes. That stitch shapes die set is a staple. If you don't have that one, you need to add that to your list, especially during celebration, so you can get a free stamp set with it. So I've got a cutting pad underneath. I just put a cutting pad on top, and we're going to crank it through the big shot. And that is going to give us, oops, we're not going to move the big shot out yet because there's actually more to cut. Okay, so that is going to give us our little guys. No fussy cutting there. He's right cut out. Our dragon. Dorbs, right? Oh, love them. 
and that is going to give us our center um, our word piece. So while we have this out, we are going to just keep on going with that um, big shot. Put that right back down again. And we're going to cut out our glimmer paper. So the glimmer paper is going to, one piece is going to come from the um, Mythical Mates dies, and one is going to come from the layering circles, because there's a scallop circle in there from the layering circles. So from the Mythical dies, we need this little um, flourish, and there should be two of these, I believe. <laughs> my magnets are really not working at all in my case. I put them in there, and I think I'm going to have to find a, just a better way to do that. Um, okay, so... I'm just going to do those on one little corner of the sheet so we can utilize the sheet for something else. And, right, glimmer paper. Love it. Love it, love it, love it. And I believe this was the largest circle. So the largest circle, and that's going to come out of the blue glimmer paper. Now, if you were making a whole bunch of these, like I recently was, and you wanted to utilize your paper your glimmer paper, you can actually um, put this so that it's a little bit off the edge because it is going to be covered. A couple of corner pieces are going to be covered by your characters here. So um, if you're making a bunch, that's one way to utilize your paper. I'm just going to go ahead and cut the full, the full scallop this time because I'm just making this one at the moment. I've already made 40 of them. <laughs> okay, so we're going to go ahead and crank that through the Big Shot machine. So we've got our scallop. Look at that. How fun is that? And then we've got two of these little these little flourishes. Okay. And I love that there's a right and a left on that one. Didn't even have to run it through twice to get them. Okay, so we're just going to put those aside for the moment. And we're going to keep on rolling. We have one more thing to do here on the Big Shot. And now I'm just swapping the um, platform here. I have the magnetic platform down. I'm going to swap that up for the one that came with the Big Shot. And that is the actual Big Shot platform. Okay, so that to the side. And now we need the brick wall folder. So this brick wall impressions folder, um, this is in the big catalog, the big Stampin' Up! catalog. It's also in my online store. Everything I'm using right now is in the online store. And um, I'm going to take some Smoky Slate cardstock, which matches the Stampin' Blends that we used on our night. And I'm going to, oops, I'm going to put it in here, but before I put it in here, what I want to see, because it looks like this is not the right size. So, I, you know what, I'll cut it down after. This is not the correct size, but that's okay. We'll, we'll, we'll work with the die first, and then we'll cut it down. Um, before we go ahead and texture this. I'm going to take the basic gray ink pad, and this is how we're going to make this cool castle wall background where the, the mortar in the, the bricks actually has the, the basic gray on it. I'm taking the ink pad, and I'm just rubbing it over the top. And this is the side with the, the, the logo on it. It's got the Sussex logo on the front here. It's the inside of that, so it's the raised embossed portion. And then I'm going to put our card panel, this is the smoky slate panel, inside and close it. I'm going to sandwich that between two cutting pads. I don't know if you guys you can hear that wind howling outside. Holy moly, it's going. So then I'm just going to crank that through the big shot. And that is how easy it is to make this background. And when you're done, there it is. It's awesome. And then I'm going to sponge it even more to make it really look medieval. But we'll cut it down first. And to clean this off, you can actually just take, <laughs> excuse me, a wet paper towel or uh, wet ones, whatever. These just wipe clean. They wipe down. So that's an easy clean afterwards. And you, or you can just keep going if you're doing multiple. So we are all done with the big shot now. So we'll just move that off the table. And I am going to bring out our cutter because this is not the correct size. I have the measurements again if you're if you're joining us late and you missed 
Um, I have a free PDF on the blog that has all the measurements on it. So if you are making this card, it also has a supply list on it. You can download this on my stampatammy.com blog simply by clicking on the link in the video's description. So this is going to be five and a quarter inches. So I'm just taking a paper trimmer and cutting it down because it was a little bit too long. We'll check that side's right. The four inch side was right. It was just that one. Okay, so now we've got our castle wall. So cool, right? And I'm going to keep going with that um, basic gray ink pad and a Stampin' Sponge. And I'm just dipping a little Stampin' Sponge in there because I want this to really be old, rustic looking castle wall. I mean, it's, it's going to be medieval here. <laughs> and fun, right? I might even do a little bit on the inside of it just to, to make it look like it's really a dirty old castle wall. Make it look authentic. All right. And now I have lost my original card. There we go. We are all ready. We've got all of our pieces cut, colored, ready to rock and roll. It is time for some assembly. So I've got a card base here made from um, basic gray. And thank you, Christine says that effect was way cool, right? It totally, and it was so perfect for this stamp set. Now, um, with the glimmer paper and sometimes with these textured, once you've textured a piece of cardstock, I prefer to use the liquid glue over the, um, over the snail just because it, it gets in those grooves a little bit better here and it holds it a little bit stronger than the snail does with this particular texture on it. So I'm going to go ahead and put some of that on the back of this panel to attach it to the card base. And then I'm going to use it on the back of this circle to attach it to our glimmer paper because I do find that the snail does not hold awesomely on the glitter. I mean, there is real glitter on this <laughs> and there it, it doesn't come off, but when it comes to adhesive, this liquid glue gets in that little, gets gets, gets in the glitter grooves better. I think gets in the groove so you can see the the edging of that sparkle on the edge of our our center piece here that's going to go right in the middle of our card all right and um, for these two dudes I just used some um, mini glue dots to stick them to the bottom I actually stuck a glue dot right on the front of it and stuck it underneath where I wanted this to go so that goes right oops wrong way one and we'll stick that right there so we've got a glittery little accent coming out flourish <laughs> Bobby says you take the scary out of card making it is not scary and believe me I mean most of you seen this one's actually going pretty smoothly but usually I usually my goal here is to show you not only how to do cool techniques but how to recover from the mistakes that you make <laughs> I'm like the doctor there operating on my cards because I'm always making some kind of mistake on it. And then it turns out to not be a mistake. It just turns out to be a really cool, you know, change. It's all good. So I'm taking some Stampin' Dimensionals and placing them on the back of this panel to pop it up. And I need another package of Dimensionals here. I love these little foam pop dots. They rock. The first batch were left over from a paper. Those paper pumpkins have so much extra pieces in them. They're great. They go on forever. I love it. Love it, love it, love it. And then we're just going to go ahead and embellishment opportunities, Donna. You got it. She's like, they're not mistakes. They're embellishment opportunities. You are right. I have lots of card kits, Debbie. Um, Debbie's asking if I do card kits. Yes, if you go onto my blog, there are some really cool ones. In fact, Linda and I just played with the one... Um, that was in the demo kit. I'm not the demo kit. The uh, occasions catalog on Wednesday. The the love you, love you lots. Happy, lots of happy, lots of happy. Oh my gosh, it was an awesome kit. Awesome kit. You can check out that one on when my video from Wednesday on my Facebook page or, page or on my blog. And paper pumpkin, which I'm hoping to have a paper pumpkin video class on on Tuesday for the December paper pumpkin kit. Um, if I, I, I'm that's my goal, but I will be back on Tuesday with a class. Hopefully it's paper pumpkin. I know I should be using the liquid glue on the bottom of this, but I'm using some snail on my dragon. I love the way he's looking. I love his expression on here. It just cracks me up. And then we're going to put our knight that we colored on this side. 
I did not line up that um, circle. I should have twisted it a little bit better, but you know what? That just makes it handmade. <laughs> And that's our card. Really, that's it. This is, I mean, it's so much fun. I love these Stampin' Blends. They're so cool to play with. And I just, I, I think, again, very therapeutic. And you can actually see on my two um, dragons here, this one, I went a little bit more saturated on him. So he's a little bit darker and pops a little bit more. This guy, he's a little bit lighter. So you can see kind of a little bit of a difference there. You can, you, whichever, whatever style you have there, there's no wrong way to do it. Okay. Michelle says maybe a class on just how to fix mistakes. Oh, every class I have is on how to fix mistakes, honey. <laughs> I'm going to show you how to make something. I'm going to show you how to make the mistake, how to fix the mistakes on it. <laughs> All right, guys. So that is our online class for today. And now it is time for some giveaways. Um, so I have two celebration sets to give away live. And then we have one after live. All you need to do to enter is leave a comment here on this video. So if you've left a comment so far on the live, you are entered to win the Heartfelt Blooms and the ever popular Party Pandas. Party Pandas. Oh, thanks for the hearts. I love you guys right back. So much fun. I, mean, I, got, I have to say one thing about this snowstorm that we have just had is that I had lots of stamping time. You know, my son was home yesterday and he's playing his games and I'm doing my work and I'm stamping away and coloring and having so much fun. So I do so enjoy that. Um, I'm just going to do a little refresh here so we can get a look at the right post. We want to make sure we pick our... Uh, well, where are we? Is it this one? Oh, there we go. 389 comments. I think it's this one. <laughs> All right, you guys. Good luck to everybody who's left a comment here. Um, the first winner is for the Heartfelt Blooms Celebration stamp set, and that goes to Pat Williams. Congratulations, Pat. And the second one is for the Ever Popular Party Pandas. Love me some pandas. And that winner is Christina Miller. Congratulations to Pat and Christina. Be sure to fill out the prize claim form. Um, you, there's a link in this video's description. If you did not win one of these prizes, don't worry. There is another chance for you. Um, with the Epic Celebration, st uh, celebration, Epic Celebration, Celebration stamp set. Wow, that's fun to say. I'll be drawing the winner of that. This date is wrong. The winner is going to be drawn on January 19th, not the 5th. The 5th is today. <laughs> I'm not drawing this one today. I'm giving you guys a chance, especially those of you who weren't able to catch the live, to leave a comment so you can win it. So the winner will be on the 19th. That is incorrect on there. And I will look forward to seeing you guys on Tuesday with my next online class, whether it's Paper Pumpkin or I might surprise you with something else. Not sure yet, but uh, Tuesday is the deadline to sign up for January's Paper Pumpkin. Just a heads up. All right, you guys, have a great weekend, and we will see you next week.